Good morning. This is Dr. Prasad from Bits Plani Goa campus presenting my research paper that is on benefits of enterprise risk management, a systematic review of literature. The presentation starts with an introduction followed by an objectives or purpose of the study. Then a discussion on research method or selection of the research papers for the literature review will be made. This is followed by a discussion on systematic review and analysis of ERM studies. Then discussion on ERM benefits will be made. Finally, presentation will conclude it with findings, limitations and scope for future research. Today's business environment is characterized with a lot of uncertainty and risk due to present COVID pandemic and other global economic and financial events. In this regard, firms faces various risks. These risks include the pure risk, operational risk, credit risk, and strategic risks. Pure risks are the risks arising from natural events beyond the firm's control. The operational risk result from the firm's internal activities. The credit risk is the inability of a firm to pay its obligations. Strategic risks are associated with the strategic decisions and directions vital to a firm's survival. Ever since the dot-com bubble and financial scandals of early 2000, the need for improved corporate governance system has been the primary focus. Corporate governance cannot be taken up in an isolation, but must be adequately combined with risk management. Enterprise risk management has been seen a promising practice to combat these risks. It first emerged in the 1990s, but gained momentum only post 2000. ERM or enterprise risk management promised to lower the firm's total risk by building resilience against systematic failures and monitoring growth opportunities. This would optimize the performance and consequently increase firm's value and longevity. Enterprise risk management is widely seen as a suitable mechanism to address these issues. However, not all convinced with ERM benefits. This necessitates the review of extent literature. So the purpose of the literature review, the main or primary purpose of this review is to examine if and how implementation of ERM can create value, performance enhancing and risk mitigating opportunities for a firm. The secondary purpose of this review is to explore the scope of ERM research and identify research gaps in the ERM literature. This is about the research method or article selections for the literature review. The articles chosen for this review are from Science Direct, Taylor & Francis, Enderscience and Emerald Insight. The keywords used to find the articles were Enterprise Risk Management, ERM, ERM and Firm Value, ERM and Performance. Then as far as the criteria for selecting the papers is concerned, the following criteria was used to identify and select research papers on ERM. The criteria used here are the time period, that is the publications which were published between 2000 and 2020 were identified and selected for this literature review. Then other criteria such as journal H index, SCA score, ABDC ranking, and articles number of citations were used as a, the important criteria for selecting the relevant research papers on enterprise risk management. The following the prominent journals are used to identify the relevant articles. The prominent journals include accounting, organization and society, British accounting review, management accounting research, Journal of Business Research. 
Finally, 127 research articles were selected based on their relevance to the research question. In line with our research question, the articles were chosen if their objective were to assess the association between ERM adoption and firm performance or other benefits. This is about the systematic review and analysis of ERM studies. Papers were initially classified based on timeline, discipline, and geographical region. This is about the number of publications on ERM over the period from the year 2001 to 2020. If you look at this, the publications are on increasing from year to year. Then this is the classification based on the, the discipline. About 45% of the articles are from financing, finance and accounting domain. About 48% of the articles accounted for management and its allied areas like corporate governance and strategy. Previous literature surveys or previous literature review indicated that ERM have highlighted predominantly on the US based. Okay. This is about the geographical region. So previous studies indicated that mostly studies were conducted from the US based. In this review, US accounts for modest 27% of all research articles. Other feasible contributions to the ERM research are from Italy, Germany, China, and Australia. We found articles from at least 35 countries. Research on ERM has expanded to the Brazil, Colombia, UK, Netherlands, Poland, Hungary, Sweden, Croatia, Palestine, Iran, Pakistan, South Korea, Malaysia, Singapore, and Taiwan. And uh, it is evident from the research or uh, literature review that the financial sector were the early adopters of ERM. This is about the benefits of the ERM. One of the recurring criticism of ERM research has been the lack of contribution from the management research scholars. So there was an impression that ERM is limited to only financial sector. To test this veracity of these presumptions, we divided the research articles into two categories. One is contribution by the management research scholars and other is contribution by the finance and the accounting scholars. So we have the evidences from the two different research scholars. One is management research scholars and other is accounting research scholars. This is about the evidence from the management research and scholars. So the following are the sum of the prominent studies on ERM by the management researchers. It is evident from these studies that higher information dissemination, improved decision making, competitive advantage, risk reduction are the important benefits or the outcomes of the ERM implementation. Majority of these studies or articles used case study methodology and in some cases they used structured interviews. These studies are from the, the different geographical region Netherlands, Brazil, Canada, and Italy are different parts of the globe. Coming to the, the evidence from the accounting and finance research point of view, the following are the, some prominent studies on ERM by accounting and finance researchers. Benefits identified among these studies are lowered risk, uh, riskness, improved performance, enhanced reputation, increased transparency, boosted company advantage. A growing consensus among accounting and finances, financial finance scholars is to link ERM with the corporate governance. It is evident from these studies that regression models were the most widely used methodology for data analysis. and structural equation model. So most 
as far as the finding is concerned most articles suggested that erm leads to value creation performance enhancement risk reduction competitive advantage improved decision making transparency and disclosure the second is erm is not centric just to the usa or north america over time it has expanded to the other geographical regions this study compiled a research from at least 35 countries so an notable absence in this list was india erm is not just restricted to financial sector the however the concept of erm materialized within the financial industry and firms from this sector were the early adopters of the erm however erm benefits and the transparency have propelled stakeholders from the other sectors to direct their companies to adopt er consequently the erm is expanded to the oil natural gas utility energy manufacturing construction hospitality healthcare and even sme sectors the other significant gap in the literature was absence of the contribution from the management scholars our analysis reveals that there has been a considerable surge in research from the management scholars over the last 10 years as far as the limitations is concerned one of the critical issues not addressed in the study was the measurement of erm so there was no consistent measurement for the level or extent to which erm is adopted basically it was used a binary measure and the research is limited to the listed companies these are the two limitations of the study as far as the scope for future research is concerned there is a need to expand the scope of research on erm to small and medium enterprise sector this was uh, not seen in the earlier studies and there is also a need for expand the scope to developing countries like india there is no study or uh, prominent studies conducted in india and the earlier studies have been adopted the case study approach for the data collection and regression models for the data analysis there is a need to adopt mixed methodologies such as qualitative research procedures and large scale surveys to validate and benefit validate the benefits of er that is uh, there is a mixed methodology approach to test the where the benefits of erm is required with this my presentation is completed thank you